Come, hey, bro. Hey, come check it outside real quick, bit, bro. How you doing today, man? Come over, come in front of him. I want you to check out our signs. Appreciate you coming through. What's your name, man? My name is Seal. Seal? Seal. Seal? I'm Solomon Seal. We know, you know, well, he asked you, do you know who we are according to the Bible? Yeah. No, no. You don't? Yeah, okay, the Israelites. Have you ever heard that before? Mm -hmm. You heard that before. So, you know, you know, the, you know the benefits of being an Israelite? Give me that uh, Romans 3. Let me show you something. Bring Romans it out. 3 and 1. Watch this. First of all, do you believe, do you know God's got commandments, right? Do you believe that we're supposed to keep the commandments or we don't? We do. We do, right? You agree with that? Let me give you a commandment first. First Corinthians 3. Let me show you a law. You might didn't know, but it's a law of God. Watch this. First Corinthians 3 and 16. You got it? Watch this. Read this. This is the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 16. You did say we, we should keep God's laws. You agree with that? Watch this. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God? The scripture said, Know ye not that we are the temple of God? And that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? Uh -huh. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. God said, We are the temple of God. If we defile our temple, God going to destroy us. You know what that's saying? Right. What that's saying? If you destroy your temple, your body, God got a key. So what are you doing right now to destroy your temple? Sense. You smoking this? Smoking this and you know on the back of the cigarette box they say um, smoke and get cancer, something of that nature, right? right. right. God said you got to kill you for destroying your temple. And what God said. Right. So when you know that law, what should you do? Start smoking. What? Flick it out for us then. Show us you believe the laws of God. You just smoked it to the back now. <laughs> You took every draw off of it. Well, yeah, let me show you, bro. According to the Bible, bro, we must keep the God's laws. You say you agree with that. Right. It changed me. It changed the rest of these brothers. We didn't know. But it changed our life for the good. Now, then I ask you, what's the advantage of us being an Israelite or a Jew? What is the greater good about that? Romans 3. Watch this. Watch this real quick. What I'm showing you, bro, bro, with us coming back to this anonymous, this is the best reason we could have ever asked for, bro. It's nothing better than this. We ain't niggas no more. We don't live just to die no more. Once we find out we the greatest people on earth, according to God, we just got to be obedient to what he telling us to do. That's why we out here, we found this news out. I'm like, bro, we trying. Man, forget that. I need to listen to God. We done tried everything. We done did everything. Now let's listen to God. Watch this. What's the advantage or what's the greater good of us being God's chosen people? Let's see what the Bible says. Read this. This is the book of Romans, chapter 3 and verse 1. Uh -huh. What advantage then hath the Jew? I mean, what advantage do you have? That's what he said. A Jew is the Israelites, the north, the southern kingdom of Israel. What advantage of the Jew? Or what advantage is the Israelites? Read. But what profit is there of circumcision? Read. Much every way. He said in much every way, meaning in every way. That's the advantage. Why? Why? Chiefly. Because. That unto them. What, because unto the, unto the Israelites, unto the Jews. Were committed the oracles of God. Uh-huh. But what if some did not believe? So he said, and to them was committed the oracles of God, meaning everything pertaining to God and his promise and his heirs was committed to us, was given to us. Watch it, Romans 9. Go back to them. Romans 9 again. Let me show you what he's talking about, bit, bro. And I'm telling you to show this, bro, you royal. You a king according to God. We're supposed to be in castle gates with crowns on our head according to God. But we're not in those states because we don't know we the Israelites and we don't do what's required of us as the Israelites. Right? Watch this. What advantage of us being the Israelites? Watch, read this. This is the book of Romans, chapter 9 and verse 4. Bring it up. Who are the Israelites to whom pertain the adoption? He said the Israelites pertain to the adoption, the glory, uh -huh. and the covenants. The covenants in the Bible was given to the Israelites. And the giving of the law. The laws of God, like the law I just told you, dest um, destroy your temple, that was given to the Israelites. Watch this, read. And the service of God read. and the promises. And the promises was given to the Israelites. The covenants, the glory, the laws, all was given to us. So what happened? If the promises was given to us, why we don't have them now? You heard of King Solomon before? You heard of King David before? These was black kings that ruled the earth. Every nation came about us. You see how we pay taxes when we go in the stores now? They tax everything you do. You get paid, they take taxes. You go to the store and buy something, they take taxes. 
Everything you do, they take taxes from you. Did you know at one point in time, they paid us taxes because the covenants, the glory, the promises was all given to us, and we had it in our possession at one time? At one time, it was ours. But what happened? What you think happened for God to take it away from us and put these white folks, these China folks, the Arab folks, the East Indian folks, all these nations over us? We go to them for everything. You want gas? You go to the East Indian, the Arab, or the white man. You want food? You go to the white man. You want tissue? Who you go to? The white man. You want any death certificate? Birth certificate? You go to who? The white man. So why did God take everything that was ours and give it to them? When we the, when we the children of God, what do we do? What you say? If He said the laws was given to you, what do we do pertaining to the law? Huh? We didn't follow the covenant. You on point? Now today today's day. Do we follow the covenant? And if we don't follow the covenant, now you ask yourself, why are we in the neighborhood? Why are we in the hood? Why are we filling the county jails? Why are we filling the clinics? Because we do what? We don't follow the covenant. We don't follow the covenant. So knowing that, what should we do? Do you want to get back to the glory of God? Do you want a crown sitting on top of your head from God? Do you want to be, just say this is our castle, this whole neighborhood good village. It's our castle, these big build-up castles, big castle gates around, and we got big royalty. We ain't royalty. Living good, right? No. Wouldn't it, if you just imagine it in your no, head, wouldn't it be glorious if we actually lived in those conditions? It'd be glory, right? So what we got to do to get those conditions? What you say? Go back to Ecclesiastes. What you say? What would we have to do to get back to those conditions? Honestly, what you think? According to God, now, not according to what you think. What you think we got to do to God in order for him to give it back to us? Because God took it away from us. Uh, what, 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 what you, okay, you said it. We don't keep the laws, right? Do you think keeping the laws is going to change our conditions dealing with God? You say no. Let's see what the Bible says. Watch this. Let, this is the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, and verse 13. Listen to this, bro. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God. And keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. So God said, look, I need... Did you turn off that van? Okay, leave it on. He said, fear God and keep his commandments is the whole duty of man, right? Go back to Second Chronicles. Let me show you. Now, ask you a question. If we come back keeping the laws, would, it, would God intervene and change our conditions? You say no. But I'm going to show you according to the Bible. He will change our conditions. Why do you think we change? Why? You think we come out here and it posts up in the neighborhood in the heat? For nothing, it changed our life. I've been married like 12 years now with a glorious marriage because I keep the laws of God. Without the laws of God, guess what I'd be? I'd be a whoremonger. I'd be an adulterer. I probably wouldn't deal with my kids like I'm supposed to. Why? Because that's what we taught, man. Just hit everything and you'll deal with the kids. I love them, but you really ain't there to finally take care of them because you gone. That's what's going on in our community. When we follow the ways of God, it grounds you in that relationship. It grounds you to that woman, to them children, with wisdom of God. Watch this. Read this. This is the book of Second Chronicles, chapter 7 and verse 14. Uh -huh. If my people, which are called by my name. Who are God's people again? What's the name of God's people? The Israelites. So he said, to my people, which is us blacks in this, in this village, God village. He said, to my people shall humble themselves uh -huh. and pray and seek my face uh -huh. and turn from their wicked ways. So he said, turn from their wicked ways and do what? Then, when we come back, when we turn back to God's commandments, turn from our evil ways, he said, and then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins. He said, and then I will hear from heaven and forgive their sins. That's what God say. But have we tried that? As a collective of people, have we tried keeping God's commandments? Like for instance, the scriptures say, God should not murder. Mobile County murder every day is a murder down here. Right. Every day, that law right there, we breaking. You think God can heal us if we killing each other? What about what about a duck fornication? We every brother in Mobile County, and I ain't pointing out nobody Pacific, just us as a collective. We hit every woman that open their legs. Right. Is that true? Yeah. If they open their legs, we crawling in between them. That's fornication. Can God heal us if we fornicate, sleeping with all the sisters? He can't heal us like that. But all he can do is judge us. How do he judge STDs? 
AIDS. Do you know HIV is running rapid all around the world right now? You've been sitting on social media. They just found like 2,000, 2,500 cases in Houston of HIV. In Oregon, 2,500 cases of HIV. Let me tell you something, bro. So we trying to show our people, when we talk about the God's laws, bro, it heals our nation, bro. God will deal with us. That's what I'm saying. Like, do you know any of God's laws? Do you know any of God's laws? What about you, big bro? Do you know any of God's commandments? Do you know any of God's commandments? All right, let me ask you this. If we keep God's commandments, do you think our communities will be better? If we keep God's commandments? Okay, well, let me give you one. That's not murder. If we keep that commandment, what would that do for our community? That'll stop all the killing, right? Because we, right now in Mobile, we killing like crazy, right? So what about loving your brother as yourself? Yeah. I don't even know you, but I see you. What's up, bro? We show each other love. What would that do if we just got along? Brother, I'm talking about, just think about the black young men in Mobile County. If we got along, what would that stop? That'll stop a whole lot. Yeah. So it shows you, if we keep God's laws, it'll change our communities. It'll change our community. That's what we are here to show our people. But if we keep God's laws as God's chosen people, we're going to take over the planet. Right. God going to give us the whole earth, bro. That's what I'm here to tell you. I found out this news. I'm like, what the heck? You think I want to stay on the bottom with God trying to give us the planet? God actually trying to give us. If God say, look, I'm going to give you the whole planet, would you take it? And when I say give it to you, meaning you're going to be on top and all the other nations are going to be your servants. White man gonna be working in your store. China man gonna be washing your clothes. That'll be nice, right? So what you think we gotta do to get those conditions? What you say? You been here long enough. What we gotta do? Huh? And do what? Keep what? Keep the commandments. We gotta keep the commandments. That's the only way that it doesn't work. But we gotta keep the commandments as God chose the people. Cause did you know, did anyone of y'all know that God, it's 18 nations on this earth. 18 nations in the Bible. Did you know the one group of people out of all them nations, God only chose one people to be his chosen people. And we are those people. We don't know that because these atrocities we went into slavery. Why did God send us into slavery? Because you know God did this to us, right? Even though the white man had his foot on our neck, did you know God, because you got to think about it. White man can't, white boy, just say five white boy pull up right now. How many of us out here? Eight of us out here. 15 white boys show up right now. You think they can whoop us? No. We will fan they tear down. Yes, sir, I'm talking about punish them. So how do they? So how do they overcome us then? If we more proper, uh, we more powerful than them. Fear. You say fear. What you say? How do they overcome us if they we better than them? Just think about the NBA. We jump higher than them. We shoot better than them. We run faster than them. Why we don't own no teams then? It got to be something that God is doing to us. It ain't them. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is family.